All right, you guys, what's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with another review for The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 6, Episode 2, Sing Sing for Your Supper is the name of the episode. All right, you guys, now, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and not already subscribed, then do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button and stop taking me out on a date and not paying for the date at the end of it, leaving me with it. So, without further ado, let's talk about Potomac, you guys. All right, you guys, so this episode, we picked up where the last one left off. You guys remember Cameron was telling Giselle that you are a broken whore from Hampton and that your coochie is on a hot box. So everyone is asking at this point, what is Sing Sing, Karen? And they stopped just so that they stopped in enough time so that they could eat. And Giselle asked, what the fuck is that, Karen? I was like, oh, very harsh words. What the fuck is that? Okay. Karen calls Giselle a liar. I agree. Now, Mia. Mia, 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 Mia. I don't understand why Mia got involved in this situation. And when she got involved in it, it seemed like she was taking Giselle's side. I'm like, girl, Mia, mind your business. You are, you've only been here for two seconds and you're already jumping into it. I could see it if Robin, which Robin did jump into it. And at one point, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. She's talking about she, Giselle has a good heart. Girl, you's a lie. Giselle has, G Giselle has a good heart. Whatever. So then Karen says, you know, the beginning of the end for she and Giselle was when Giselle said that Ray would be six feet under before her looks faded. And then they showed her that, that season when he told her that. And then they, they showed that confession, that green, that interview look of hers with that clown makeup on. I was like, Giselle, you look like a got dang on clown. Really, Karen? That was the beginning of the end for you? That Ray would be six feet under? It wasn't the whole situation where she said that Ray wanted to have sex with Erica Lyles? That wasn't the beginning of the end? I mean, she sat there and said that you... Well, we'll talk, we can talk about that, too, because, I mean, <laughs> he said Katie. I got ahead of myself, but child. So, Wendy chimes in, right, saying that, you know, it shouldn't be a gang up. And, and Robin's like, it's not a gang up. Robin, shut up. Oh, God, why is Robin even... Why is Robin back? I just don't get it. Robin brings no nothing to this season. I know y'all love Juan. That's it. So we see so Karen is Karen as Robin. When is she walking down the aisle? Oh God, she says, "When is your wedding?" She says, and Robin says, "Sometime after COVID." She says, "When is yours?" Well, mine is soon, and it's going to be in a very it's going to be in a safe way. And then she said, um, in a, she said something about it, in a real way and in a real relationship. I was like, so is Karen implying that Robin and Juan's relationship is not real? I do believe Robin and Juan's relationship is real. I'm not going to sit here and harp on, on Robin and Juan not having a wedding during COVID. I'm not going to sit here and harp on that. I did think that that's what they were going to, I think, I did feel that that was going to be her storyline for this season. Her and Juan going down the aisle, much like what Cynthia did in Atlanta. I did feel that would be her storyline, but it's not. And I, know, I saw some people in, and I think it might have been, I don't forget whose comments it was, but people were like, why does she have to have a why does she have to have a wedding? I mean she can go to the justice, she can go to the justice of the peace, whatever. Um so Wendy does reveal to the ladies that she also did get her butt done. And I think that she said on social media last week that she got a BBL. So then at the end of the night, Mia wanted to exchange numbers with Giselle and with Robin. I don't have an issue with that. Like, I, I'm, 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 all, I'm all here for, you know, going into a situation, getting to know people on your own. Don't listen to what Karen says. Get to know Robin and Giselle for yourself. I'm cool with that. I'm cool. I don't have an issue with that. My issue with Mia was the fact that Mia chimed in to talk to Karen saying that she feels that Giselle has a good heart. You just met this woman two seconds ago. How do you know she has a good heart? That was my issue with Mia. But let's move on. All right, you guys, let's talk about Mia real quick. The jury is still out on Mia. The jury is out on Mia. I'm still trying to feel, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get the feel for Mia. I know next week we'll meet the friend of the housewives, but I'm really trying to get the feel for Mia. So Mia tells us that she is a born and raised girl from the DMV. 
she tells us, I mean, her penthouse, her penthouse was nice. She has three kids, right? And her um, two of them were with her husband, Gordon, and one is from a previous relationship. Um, when we first met, I mean, when we first saw Gordon, you know, Gordon kind of looks like Simon from um, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Portia's fiance. He kind of gives you that, that Simon look. That's just my personal opinion. You guys can let me know if you guys get that same look and vibe from him. I don't know if he's African or not, but I'm just saying he just looks like he just the gray hair, the the, the bald is the the bald head. Uh, that he just kind of gives me the the look of Simon. Now, in this scene, so Mia tells us that you know, and I've saw I've actually saw the joint. Um, I've actually saw their um practice, whatever their their business. Because I think it's some here in, in Dallas. I've saw some before. I'm pretty sure I've saw some in Dallas. I know I have. I know I have. I've saw some around here in Dallas. Probably where my old apartment was. I've definitely saw some in Dallas. So he ran the business for a while. So now she's running it. I was looking at that scene when she was taking those phone calls. And the way he was looking, Gordon wasn't really feeling it. I think Mia might want to, you know, take a long, hard look at this show. <sighs> She, cause like I said, he just didn't look like he was feeling that even in the slightest bit. But um, yeah, we're gonna move on from Mia. But like I said, the jury for Mia is still out on Mia, cause I'm gonna talk about Mia a little bit more in the episode. So let's move on. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Candace. So we see Candace. So Candace is basically a jack of all trades this season. Candace is, we all know, Candace told us at the reunion last year that she is at Howard and she's getting her masters. And she's shooting a pilot for a TV show. She didn't say that. I don't think she ever said the name of the show. But the show is kind of mimicking her life just a little bit. She's playing a stepmother in a blended family. But I believe with the show, I think that the, the character she's playing is a stepmother among other baby mamas and multiple at that. And I think with Chris, I think, is it one, is it one baby mama or is it two? You guys, I don't know when it comes to Chris. So... Not on, like I said, so she is shooting this pilot. She is, you know, in school at Howard and she's doing music. And also shout out to Candace because Candace has, has a little, not a little, she has a role on, if you guys don't watch the Netflix series, um, Family Reunion, which stars Tia Mowry. It has Loretta Devine in it. And, you know, she's she's been on um, Family Reunion um, as well as Kenya Moore and as well as um, Brandy Glanville from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So they were on this reality show. They're on this reality show that's similar to The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I forgot what the name of the show was. But Candace plays a character by the name of Sunita Chanel. <laughs> you guys go watch that episode with her because, I mean, Candace did a damn good job. She talked with this accent, but, you know, and she doesn't like Kenya. She talks with an accent, and then when she, in her interview, she kicked, she killed the accent and talked mad mess about Kenya. It was funny. So then we see Candace. She goes home, and as she gets to the house, she opens, she actually, before she opens the door, there's a box there, and it's from Karen, and it's Karen inviting her to her home. Candace, however, is unsure about going, which I, I get, I get why Candace is unsure, especially with all the shit that happened with Candace and Karen last season. Especially when Karen went to the Bravo execs trying to get Candace fired, which I still have an issue with Karen for that one. I, I don't, I didn't agree with that when Karen did it last season, and I still don't agree with it now. If you want to go to the Bravo execs and have anybody fired, have your friend fired. I'm just, and I know you guys love her. I didn't have an issue with her. I'm not saying her name on the channel in this review. I'm not speaking of her. I didn't have an issue with her, but if you want to go to the execs about anybody, that should have been a person you would have went to the execs about. So that was my issue with Karen. And like I said, like I've said in plenty of videos, I, 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 I you know, you guys know I love Karen. I, I, I'm not going to deny that I love Karen, but I'm not above calling Karen out when Karen is wrong. I have no problem calling Karen out. So let's move on. Oh God, not football head. Oh, guys, let's talk about football head, Hey Arnold, Ashley Darby. So we see Ashley and Dean. They're coloring. Then Sheila stopped by. 
Sheila asked, how was Michael doing? I'm like, who? You asked, how was who doing? Charlie was interested to hear Sheila ask about Michael. And then Ashley says, you know, Michael and I are really good. You know, whenever I call him, he answers on the first ring. I'm like, girl, what the fuck does that mean? He answers on the first ring. I mean, that must mean that he, he has his phone right next to him. He's like, you know what? Ash and I have had issues. I don't want this helper to know that I'm cheating on her. Let me answer this goddamn phone. You be quiet. Don't moan. Don't speak. Don't breathe. But okay, Ashley, go off. So then Ashley lets us know she has a nanny by the name of Daisy that will be helping helping her out with Dean, I guess, after she has the baby. Girl, why is Michael not helping you out after the... What kind of businesses does Michael have? Like, I remember, like, what did he have before Oz? Don't care. Y'all can let me know what, what Michael did. I don't care, but you can let me know. So then Ashley says, you know, she and Michael are on the same page. I'm like, okay, Ashley. I guess you got to say it out loud and say it to yourself so that way you can believe it, but I don't believe it. So then she says, you know, how does she have this conversation with Sheila? I don't know. So she tells Sheila that, you know, her sex drive is there, right? But it's just, you know, very uncomfortable for her to have sex. But she has other holes. I was like, oh my God. I don't even want to think about him having sex. I don't want to think about Michael in your in your first in the front hole i don't want to think about him in the back hole or this hole and i'm like oh my god ashley i don't want to know that michael is you know doing anal with you i don't want to know that you are giving michael a blow job i don't want to know any of that i don't want to think about that i don't want that visual that is disgusting you are sleeping with the damn crypt keeper god nasty so then we see ashley she's talking to her doula right so I guess so, I guess she doesn't, you know, to combat having postpartum, she, she's going to eat her um her um, placenta, right? So Karen comes over and Karen is privy to the conversation and Karen was like, oh no, you know, when I had my children, I did not want to look at my placenta. I didn't want my placenta to go back in my body. I didn't want it. Go away from me. I'm with you, Karen. It's coming at your vagina. Why would you want to eat it? I mean, I know people do eat their placenta, but, ew. I mean, it, okay. So then Karen invites her and Michael to her home, and they talk about the Sing Sing thing, right? And Karen's like, you know, I looked up Sing Sing, and it's a jail in New York. So, you know, it was just me making something up. You know, I had already said something about Giselle's hot box. So I just figured, let's say Sing Sing. Girl, Giselle should go to Sing Sing. Speaking of Giselle, we gonna talk about her in just a minute. Cause I was just watching Watch What Happens Live, and my gosh, she's on there. With... I can only take so much of Michael Rappaport. I really can only take so much of that man. And then Giselle with this pleather, whatever the hell this shit is, on her with this. Never mind. Moving on. You know when I th when I think about Giselle, I think Giselle just does this shit at this point just to get on our nerves, because the shit that Giselle wears, like she wears expensive shit but she makes it look tacky as fuck right like she had did she have on chanel because robin went up to her house so the west wing of her house is finished right i was like the west wing of that 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 monstrosity that house is a god that house is a god oh god child the west wing so she show uh, the versace sheets i'm like those versace sheets look ugly as fuck they're ugly Period, point blank, ugly, ugly, ugly. I will say one nice thing about Giselle's West Wing, and it's gonna, it's still gonna be shady, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be the nicest thing I can say, but it's still shady. The nicest thing I can say about Giselle's West Wing of her house is, it's not as, uh, it's not as ugly and it's not as gaudy as the other side of her house, because the other side of the house is a hot goddamn mess, but. The West Wing is not nearly as ugly and as gaudy. It doesn't look like, you know, a pack of Skittles just burst in her house. God, even Robin said that the house, even Robin said that the house is ugly. When your friend is shading you and somebody like Robin, Robin, 
how do you allow Robin Dixon to shade you? I don't get it. Robin, once again, I'm going to say it. Robin, 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 Robin. We let him Robin shade us. Robin has lived, you know what? We're not gonna talk about Robin because Robin didn't do anything to me in this episode. But again, it's Robin. Y'all can take that how y'all want it. So Giselle at this point, she now wants to admit that Jamal was in the phone. Girl, we knew that from the jump. Not one person believed that that was a real relationship. Now, Andy did ask her on Watch What Happens Live, did the binder have anything to do with them breaking up? She says, no, it did not. It actually brought them closer together. I'm like, girl, uh, well, you know what? You know what? Maybe it did because Jamal did have something. <clears throat> I remember when Jamal got on, 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 on his live last year. Actually, that was this year. Actually, it was earlier this year. No, that was actually last year, right? Was it the end of last year? Child, when the hell? Yeah, it was. It was just, yeah, it was last year. Whatever. So then they call Candace and they tell Candace what happened with, you know, when they got her butt done, her boobs done. They also tell her about Karen and Giselle getting into it. I don't care. So then we see Giselle with her daughters, right? And they are eating. And we find out that her daughter, Grace, you know, she's going to get her permit, trying to get her learner's permit to drive. Now she's taking the test twice. You know, I passed my test on the first time. Cause I, I'm I'm good. So when like when it comes to me, I remember I remember things easily. I have photographic memory. So I was able to pass my test. I actually think I passed my test with a what did I pass my test with? Because I was so nervous going into it. Cause I know you have to get a 75. But I think I got an 80. I got like an 80 on my test. I didn't do the driving test because I told my mom, I'm like, I don't want to do the driving test because I'm like, that one, I will fail. She's like, I'm gonna make you take it. I'm like, please don't. Like, I'm going to fail that motherfucker. And she was like, why do you think you'll fail? I'm like, girl, I don't know how to parallel park. That was when I was 16. I didn't know how to parallel park at 16. At 32, I didn't know how to parallel park. So I'm like, JB, you don't know how to parallel park. 16-year-old JB did not know how to parallel park. 32-year-old JB does. <laughs> um, You know, it's so funny. Giselle's girls have more sense than she does. They talking about how she picks terrible men. Those girls read her down every year. Girl, you should really be tired of it at this point. But let's move on. All right, you guys, I'm going to talk about Wendy and then we'll wrap up with Karen. So we see Wendy. So Wendy has, so Wendy's mother comes over for dinner, right? And Wendy has, you know, a, you know, all Nigerian food that they eat. She says she doesn't introduce, she doesn't do it for her American friends because it's too spicy. Ooh. So is, is traditional Jamaican food spicy? Yes. I was just talking to one of my friends today about spicy foods. Mm, I'm a fat ass at heart. I love me some spicy foods. Like I love me something with some, I love a little kick, a little, some food with a little bit of a kick to it. But when it comes to me with spicy foods, I don't think spicy foods like me. My friend was like, what is it? Does it give you indigestion? It, he was, you know, he was saying it gives him heartburn. Nah, it don't give me heartburn. It gives me terrible gas. Gotta be honest with you guys, it gives me terrible gas. But I love some spicy food. Like, I love spicy food. The only thing that's spicy that I don't like is, I don't like hot sauce. I hate hot sauce. And I think it's because I hate the, the, the scent of hot sauce. Cannot stand it. Cannot stand it. I don't, I can't stand hot sauce. Um... I think, like, certain, certain things I don't like the scent of. Hot sauce, jalapenos. I just don't like this. I just don't like the smell of them. But if I like, if I could, if I could tolerate the smell of them, I would eat them. But I just don't like the smell of them. Cannot stand it. That scent, the scent of a jalapeno, the scent of hot sauce, Tabasco sauce, all that stuff. It just really, it makes my stomach ups. It, it really hurts my stomach when I smell it. Because whenever, like my cousin, she she had a piece of chicken a few weeks ago, last week. Bitch just doused. Yes, I call my, I call my, she knows I call her a bitch. So don't be like, JB, you called her a bitch, she knows. She just doused it in, in hot sauce. I'm like, damn. I'm like, first of all, get away from me, that stinks. Secondly, damn. 
If that was me, I would be on the toilet all night. Sorry, just got to keep it real with you guys. But yeah, I would love to try some Jamaican food. So, <laughs> Wendy's mama told her she wants a boob job and she wants them all to, you know, chip. She wants them all to pay for it because her, her, her breasts are like flapjacks. I was like, lady, we did not need to know that, right? And they have until December to pay for it. So Wendy, Wendy tells them that she wants to start her own home essential. I was like, girl, I know you're not going to do what Monique did with the essential oils, but no, she's doing candles. I was like, okay, whatever. Let's move on. All right, you guys, let's talk about the grand dame, Karen. So we see Karen and Ray, so they're making up their bed. And I'm so, I'm like, oh my God, why did y'all have to bring up the fact that Karen's talking about her vibrating pillow? I don't want to imagine Karen and Ray having sex. I don't want to imagine Karen putting a vibrating pillow between her legs. And the vibrating pillow becomes wet. <clears throat> Once again, y'all know, love the grand dame, but I don't want to see that. Not at all. Wait a minute, I saw some. Give me just a second, you guys. My bad, you guys. Um, I saw a notification come through on my phone. Um, where are we at? So Karen tells Ray about the about Wendy's party. And she says that it was really rough with she and Giselle as she's actually not proud of how how hard she was. And I'm like, well, at least you can be honest about that. Huh. Let's see. How do I feel? I don't think Karen was hard enough on Giselle. Let's keep it real with you. Put your foot all over her turkey ass neck. Like loose turkey neck Giselle. What did I call her last week? I called her turkey neck it's something else I called her. It's something else I called her. I got to go look and see what I... What did I call Giselle last week? Because I really forgot what I called her last week. Because it's what we're going to stick with. Saturn's rings. How did I forget that? Saturn's rings. That's what I call Giselle. Cause, and um, people ask me, why did I call Giselle Saturn's Rings? I know Misha asked me on her channel, why did I call her Saturn's Rings? And somebody else was laughing at the fact that I said Saturn's Rings. So the reason that I'm calling Giselle Saturn's Rings is because of the lines around Giselle's necks. And you guys know I don't like Giselle. So I'm going to shade Giselle at every chance I get. Saturn's Rings. Saturn's Rings. I'm going to shade her all the time. She's going to get it and 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 get it um let's move on you guys actually i'm gonna pause right here for just for a second all right you guys um where we at 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 where we where we at all right so um karen tells ray that you know she um she feels that giselle is dragging her because of the situation with jamal which i'm like okay i'll give you that one I think that Giselle, I don't know, Giselle wants to go after Jamal, so it was just easier to go after Karen and go after the person who's not on the show anymore for the things that are going on with she and Jamal, right? So Karen says that she's gonna throw, she wants to throw a love party for the ladies because when they filmed this, it was, I guess, around Valentine's, right? So they have the party and the food that Karen and Ray had. Oh God, that food looks so good. So um, we find out that both Giselle nor Robin are coming to the party. And so this is actually, which was really interesting to me, this was actually the first time that Karen and Ray are meeting G, Gordon, who is Mia's husband. Um, Mia told us that she met Gordon when he was with his third wife. So I'm like, so were you a mistress? Like, I don't, did anybody catch it when she said that? I'm like, so you met him when he was still married to the third wife so were you the mistress were you was he che like did he cheat on did you did he cheat on his wife with you like she didn't she just said that and, and left it at that i'm like girl are you leaving something out like i was like ooh. so then ashley shows up without michael candace comes in her and chris and karen tells her you know um me and you should have one-on-one -on -one time you know outside of this and candace invites her over to the house to be able to see it so then, um, so now Mia is talking about the fact that she's not feeling Giselle. I'm like, really? You're not feeling Giselle, but even Wendy clocked this. You're not feeling Giselle, but at the party, you got her phone number and you said that, um, she had a good heart, but now you backtracked. 
it, and she's like, you know, it was the comment about that Ray would be six feet under before her looks fade. I'm like, so you've never, so you mean to tell me you've never watched The Real Housewives of Potomac before? Is that what you're trying to pretend? <sighs> Whatever. So they play a game, right? And it was a game of which I didn't care if I didn't need to know anything about any of these couples. Um, they asked them where did they meet at. She and Mia and what's her name and G met at a strip club. Um, I, uh, um, Eddie and and what's her name they met when they were um, seventeen. And when her family moved to Baltimore, Karen and Ray met at the Congressional Black Caucus. Where was the most? Where was the? Something about where where was the most outrageous place they've had sex? Karen and Ray had sex in the kitchen. That is nasty. I hope they uh, mm -mm. went in at the house. Karen and Ray had sex in, in the kitchen, on the counter, and on the floor. Eddie and um, Eddie and Wendy had sex outside. Child, I forgot about Chris and Candace. Chris and Candace met each other because they worked together. Chris and Candace had sex. They weren't. They didn't match. Because he said Mexico somewhere. Mia and G had sex in a Waffle House bathroom. Girl, that is nasty. I hope it was a men's restroom and not the women's. I'm just going to put that out there. I hope it was a men's restroom and not the women's. I did not know that women were just nasty. I did not know women were so nasty until my first job. God, I didn't know the women's restroom was that nasty. I really hope it was a men's restroom. I mean, the men's ain't that much better because men piss on the floor, but how did y'all have sex in the bathroom? You got the men's restrooms and that smells like piss. You got the women's restroom. I'm not going to even talk about that mess. But okay. But, you know, um, actually I went out of order because that was actually before Wendy. Now I will say Wendy was coming at Mia hella hard. But I got what she was saying, but she was really coming at me just a little too hard for my liking. But that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. And um, we're going to move on to marital medicine. All right, you guys. So that is it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And hit the notification bell button, you guys. So um, until the next one, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask or not, whichever one you guys do decide to do. Just make sure that you guys stay blessed, stay safe, social distance, and I will see you guys in the next one. So until then, bye guys. Forgot to do my closing.